where they see the place of place or choir of the fathers and of the just. See that? Because sort of the fathers and the just that have died, they're not reincarnated and come back on the earth. All right. It says this. Even hereby are they punished for a chaos deep and large is fixed between them. Keep that in mind because in Luke 16, we're going to read about that same chaos and large is fixed between them. Insomuch that a just man that have co compassion upon them cannot be admitted, nor can one that is unjust if he were bold enough to attempt pass over it. Now, with that, we're going to go to Luke chapter 16 and we're going to see if Josephus is losing his mind or going off like some, to say, some like to say. This is Luke chapter 16, and I'm going to start at 18, a verse above it, so you can see if Yahweh Shai says this is a parable, all right, or if he just start telling them about this place straight out, like it is. It says, whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery, and whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. So Yahweh Shai HaMashiach the Christ went straight into talking to this place. He didn't say it was no parable. And at the end, he ain't going to say it's no parable. It says this. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at the, at the gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked the sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels in the Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. This goes completely with what Josephus is saying. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the, the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. Just like Josephus said, a chaos deep and large is fixed between them. All right, Yahweh Shai, when he was telling the story, he said, And between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which pass from hence to, to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Meaning raise him to, from the dead and send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded from one that rose from the dead. And who is that one that rose from the dead? Yahweh Shai Mashiach the Christ himself. All right. Now, reading along, we're just going to move along because it's, it's clearly going with the scriptures. Ain't much commentary needed. It says, this is the discourse. Um, this is the discourse concerning Hades, wherein the souls of all men, all men, including the other nations. So the just of the other nations, they go to Abraham's bosom also. Because what saith the scripture? By Abraham will all nations, kindreds, and tongues be blessed. So everyone has to go through Abraham in order to get into the kingdom of heaven. Abraham, the promise that was made to Abraham is why um, all these people of the world can be uh, just if they believe in, our, in, 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 in the doctrine of the Israelites. All right. It says, are confined until a proper season, which God hath determined, when he will make a resurrection of all men from the dead, not procuring a, a transmigration of souls from one body to another, but raising again those very bodies, which you Greeks seem to be dissolved, do not disbelieve, uh, do not believe their resurrection, man. So you cats talking about, oh, it's going to be like Michael Jackson thriller, cash is going to be raised from the dead. Yeah, that's exactly what it's like, nigga. Or Negro, whatever you want to be called. Because I'm going to go to Wisdom of Solomon for you. I'm going to Wisdom of Solomon for you. If 
I'm not well mistaken, uh, Yeah, here we go. Wisdom of Solomon 16, 14. A man indeed killeth through his malice and the spirit. When it is gone forth, returneth not. It says, and the spirit. When it is gone forth, returneth not. Neither the soul received up cometh again. It says, neither the soul received up cometh again. All right? Unless... All right, that, that that's 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 reincarnation, um um um, cut and destroyed, man. It ain't coming back on the earth again until this last great resurrection of the dead at the end. All right, and let me let me get you Revelation six and nine to show you that there is a place where you got actual souls and people, and you know, or souls of people, I should say. This is Revelation six and nine. It says, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the testimony for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. All right. So there's an actual place where righteous men are, are there. And it, and it goes on to tell you how they cried to the Most High to deliver the righteous on the earth. All right. Um, Read on in Josephus. It says, for while you believe that the soul is created and yet is made immortal by God according to the doctrine of Plato. See, you think Josephus don't know what he's talking about. They can say they say Josephus went out. Josephus was cutting Plato and all these great Greek, Greek minds or whatever you want to call them. He was murdering their doctrine. He said, in this in time, be not incredulous. I mean, don't be no disbeliever, but believe that God is able when he have raised to life that body which was made as a compound of the same elements to make it immortal, for it must never be said of God that he is able to do some things and unable to do others. We have therefore believed that the body will be raised again. For although it be dissolved, it is not perished. For the earth received, receives it remain, its remains and preserves them. And while they are like seed and are mixed among the more fruitful soil, they flourish. And what is sown is indeed sown, bare, sown to bear grain. Once again, we're going to see if Josephus is going off, man. You can't just say that somebody going off here and then this paragraph, they on point. All right? Especially not the ancestors and forefathers, man. This is 1 Corinthians 15 and 30. Or 15 and... 35. It says, but some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool. That which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or some of grain. But God giveth it a body as it pleased him. And to every seed his own body. Alright, you can't just go, you can't plant an orange and get an apple seed. You got to destroy the orange, take the seeds out and plant the seeds first, man. Same thing that happens with the soul and the body. Um... Skipping down in 1 Corinthians 15 to 42. It says, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in incorruption. It is raised in incorruptions. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is uh, sown in weakness and raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so as it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. And no sex was involved. Adam was made of the dust of the earth earthly. And the spirit uh, and, and the man Yahweh Shai Mashiach the Christ, no sex was involved. That's why he's called the second Adam. Because he was made of the, uh, basically the dust and the, uh, of wisdom. The same way the Most High formed the first man Adam out of the dust of the ground, he formed Yahweh Shai out of the dust and spirit of wisdom. And planted that seed of David inside of Mary, a virgin who had never had sex before, according to the scriptures. Joseph could not have been the father of Yahweh Shai Mashiach the Christ because Jeremiah tells you that no one from the line of Jeconia will ever sit on the throne in Israel again. And Joseph was from the line of Jeconia. I encourage all you brothers to watch the breakdown by the brothers in St. Louis, the St. Louis Israelites. 